Have they seen you yet? They haven't yet. Yeah. When you're ready, would you like to lie down? Yes, sir. Uh, do you, is there any reason why you think you may have osteoporosis? Um, well, I was told by my clinician at Vincent Square that there's a possibility because of the low eating uh, and the vitamin D deficiency and the risk, the higher risk of having it, which is why I'm having a scan today to try and basically see whether or not I have it. You haven't experienced symptoms of it? No, I haven't. Um, I haven't broken a bone since back in 2004, uh, and even that was just an accident and falling over. So. You, you feel healthy. I feel healthy, yeah. So things crossed today. Yeah, there good. Isn't any <laughs> Are you at a healthy weight? Um, I'm not. Uh, Forty-nine point nine kilograms. Um, only two weeks ago was the first time I ever got over fifty kilograms. Uh, of my age and height, it's it's underweight quite a lot. But for you, you're doing well. It sounds like. Um, in terms of physical health, um, it, it really fluctuates because I have atypical anorexia nervosa. It, um, it means not every day is the same. I can go a few days eating larger quantities of food, and I can go a few days virtually eating nothing. So the weight, it sometimes fluctuates, but it's never really over 50. Do you feel okay about telling me your, your weight? Yeah. Some people have an issue around that, and it's sometimes felt that that can trigger other people, but it, you know, it's a hard one to call. It is a bit of a, a difficult thing to discuss, but um, I'm confident in my own body uh, and to discuss my weight uh, I know for some people it's quite hard to might be embarrassed if they're underweight or overweight I do get at times embarrassed being underweight I know it's not normal weight uh, I'd be self-conscious if I was at the beach or in sunny weather to take off my shirt but in terms of discussing it it's now more than in the past I'm more confident to discuss it Is that a weight you're happy with? No my siblings, my friends, you're all the same age, they weigh sometimes nearly double my weight. Um, I, I know, personally, it's not a healthy weight to be at, uh, but I just find it so hard just to gain weight, no matter how much I try and eat, uh, how much I try and balance my diet. I mean, I've always been fairly thin my whole life anyway, but over the past few years with the eating disorder, it's just really prevented me from gaining any weight whatsoever. So what's your job? Um, I'm a radiographer, so mm. I take all different types of X-rays, but for we're going to be doing just today the DEXA scan and the body composition. Which scans? What does it scan? Um, so it's looking for um, density of the bone, looking at bone mineral density. The health of the bone? Yeah, yeah. Um, so we usually do this to rule out osteopenia, osteoporosis. People with quite um, a low body weight as well can be quite susceptible to having osteopenia. So that's what we're going to be doing for you today. Um, so we'll start start with the hip and the lower back, and then we're going to do a full body. Putting it bluntly, oh, does Sam have osteoporosis? Technically, you can't diagnose osteoporosis in somebody less than 40 or 35, certainly. What, what can we tell from those scans, then, in a nutshell? Well, we can tell that he's, you know, that in a nutshell, that if he doesn't um, improve and uh, get his weight better, then he will have osteoporosis when he gets out into, into, later, uh, into later life in 20 years from now. And he will be at very much greater risk of, of a fracture. It's not very comforting news. Mm -hmm. I mean... I would have gained the impression that I knew, I knew my bones weren't going to be 100% healthy, but to have the bones of a middle-aged man is not what I expected. It's, not, it's mm. not good news, to be honest. You didn't expect that. I didn't expect it to be as bad as that. Is that reasonable to say that, uh, uh, Doctor, like, that he's got the bones of a middle-aged well, man? Well, he would have the bones of an average middle-aged man, yes, so, but, he, but not have the bones of a, a man with poor bones in middle age. Uh, At least children haven't got the health of a of an ill old man. <laughs> That's slightly better, I suppose. <laughs> well, absolutely, and I've tried to put a positive spin on it because I think there's something you can do about it. And, uh, you know, the, the, it's, it's obviously anorexia has more widespread problems than just bone and uh, just the body composition and so on. But uh, these are very in critical uh, things because they have implications about the long-term life uh, span and, and long-term 
a healthy life, if you like, with without fractures and so on. We don't actually know if you you know if you ask me to point out the studies which had shown that people of 20 who had anorexia have very much higher rates of fracture in their 70s, I couldn't do it. And there just isn't the information out there. But it seems very logical, and we know that uh, low body weight is a very uh, critical um, risk factor for fractures in, in older people, in people over the age of 40. Um, so, you know, BMI of less than 19 goes into our risk factor calculations, and um, I didn't look at your BMI, but it will be less than 19. sweets by your bed. I do, I always have something there. Do you? You got some Starburst, some biscuits, and a packet of cheese savouries. <laughs> yeah. So what's that all about? I rely sometimes on just the quick pick-me-ups to get me through the day. It's because I know at the moment I'm not eating the full meals. I know I mean, no one can go not eating anything, I'll be stuck in bed all day. Mm -hmm. So just the starburst, the cheese savouries, the cans of pop, they can keep me going. I've learned to pace myself, what I can and can't do, mm -hmm. uh, how that keep me going for the day. So that would keep me going for today. What did you eat last night? Um, I made spaghetti bolognese last night. That was the only meal I've had in the past two days. A significant meal. Uh, and then last night it was just some almond slices, uh, about four or five Starbursts, and a handful of cheese savouries. Mm. But not a lot. Funny, isn't it? It's not funny, but it's, it's peculiar. It is. I, I, I know myself it's, it's not right. It's, it's, it's different. But I understand myself. I know that's, that's how I manage to keep going for a day. Mm. The reason you sought services to begin with was because you'd collapsed? I'd collapsed and then, um, you'll see, I'd moved, in, moved into student accommodation last year uh, and obviously booked in with a new GP and such and we had the medical and then um, I've always been quite thin and underweight but I didn't realise how underweight I was until my new GP had said, this is the cause for concern. I'm not only in the underweight bracket, I'm what, what, what would we define as anorexia? Uh, and he asked me to explain my eating to him. And I said, you know, I, I don't really eat, to be honest. Uh, so he started off, he started off a therapy session, uh, which wasn't necessarily eating orientated. It was just your general therapy. But um, that only lasted for one day. And then they referred me to Vincent Square. Uh, he fast-tracked my application really because it would have been a waiting list of at least a few weeks possibly a few months but in fact I was so weak I was like an old woman I was really frail I was um I got very ill as well at the start of this year and ill from it, it was just not eating my immune system was so open and um, it must be just a cough and a cold for anyone who would have shook it off after a day or two I was you know proper bedroom for over a week it just it incapacitated me to be honest and that's when I, that's when he realized and i realized we need to address this issue otherwise it can get a lot worse a lot sooner so since that collapse in march do you feel that you've sort of improving only really the past month so from around july time i've started to notice a slight improvement from March until July, it was, you know, I tried to do it gradually, for the um, slowly increase my eating, but Vincent Square told me it's never gonna work that way. If I want to go back to normal eating, I need to throw myself in the deep end. But, you know, to go from having nothing a day to three meals and three snacks, it's, the only feeling I can describe is Imagine the feeling you get just after you've had a Christmas dinner. They're absolutely stuffed, full, couldn't eat another bite. And then someone tries to ram another Christmas dinner down you. Everything inside you, your head, your body, your stomach is saying, 
no, don't eat. That's what it's like for me trying to eat breakfast or lunch or dinner. 